Okay, so I've recreated these popular thumbnail styles in some of my previous YouTube videos. And today, I'm going to show you how to create every single one of them using Photoshop. But if you don't have access to Photoshop, feel free to use PhotoP to achieve the same results. It's a free web-based Photoshop alternative with similar features. As a bonus, I'll also be leaving these templates and files in the resource channel of my Discord server. The link will be in the description and on my channel page. So let's get started. First style we're going to create is this popular graph thumbnail. Let's head over to Photoshop and create a 1920 by 1080 document. I like to unlock my background by simply hitting this icon or just double click the layer and then hit OK. We'll start with the graph, so let's hit this icon and add a gradient. Now let's click here and select our colors. We'll use black for this side and select something lighter for the other side. If you find that the color doesn't change, simply click here and increase the opacity. Now everything looks great, so we can go ahead and hit OK here. Our graph will be increasing, so let's tilt the angle slightly. Feel free to play around with this, but 100 seems to get the job done for me. We'll also hit Dither and then finally OK. Next, we'll pick this pen tool and draw our preferred graph. Make sure the graph goes all the way to the end and then goes around the bottom here to the beginning. Once we're done, we can go down here and add a solid color. Feel free to choose your preferred color for the graph. Now we're going to choose the Path Selection tool, add a stroke, and set the stroke width to something like 30. Let's also go to the Stroke options and choose Rounded Corners and Caps. Now we need to duplicate our layer. For that, we can select the layer and use the shortcut Ctrl-J for Windows or Command-J for Mac. Alternatively, you can drag the layer while holding down the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows to create a new copy of the layer. Now for the top layer, make sure the Path Selection tool is still selected and then remove the fill by selecting this. We'll do the same with the bottom layer except the stroke will be removed instead. Let's also change the stroke color for our top layer. Something lighter should help differentiate both layers. Our line looks too big, so let's decrease the size to 12. Feel free to use whichever size you prefer. It looks good now, so let's right-click our top layer and then select Blending Options. Now we can add a drop shadow and change the color to something darker. We also need to add an outer glow, so let's choose our color and play around with these settings. Our drop shadow color doesn't fit very well, so let's change the color before we save these options. In case you want to modify the graph points, make sure the Direct Selection tool is selected and then click and drag the points you want to change. Keep in mind that you'll need to do the same for both layers. You can also change the colors by changing the fill color for the second layer and the stroke color for the top layer. The drop shadow and outer glow will also need to be changed to match our color, so we need to right-click our top layer, select Blending Options, and then modify the settings. Our graph looks good now, so let's go ahead and bring in our avatar. If you don't already have an avatar with a transparent background, we can do that with Photoshop. Simply drop the image inside our project and double-click it. Now let's unlock our layer here and use the Magic Wand tool and Quick Selection tools to remove the background. Another way to remove the background is to rasterize our layer and then use the same Magic Wand tool and Quick Selection tools to remove the background. This works perfectly, but I prefer something simpler with AI. So let's drop our avatar inside Adobe Background Remover and wait for it to do its magic. As you can see, it's done a pretty good job removing our background. We can download and import it into Photoshop. Our image looks good, but let's add a bit of brightness to our avatar. We'll go to Adjustments and add a curve. Our avatar looks brighter, but so does our graph, which isn't ideal. To fix this, we can put the cursor between the curve layer and our avatar. While holding the Option key on a Mac or Alt key on Windows, click between these two layers to create a clipping mask. As you can see, our avatar is the only thing that's still bright now. Another way of doing this is to simply right-click the curve layer and then select Create Clipping Mask. Feel free to play around with the curves till you get your desired look. We need to create the rectangles at the top, so let's create them by selecting the Rectangle tool and then drawing our preferred rectangle. Let's also duplicate the rectangle layer and reshape them to fit our reference image. We need to change the color for this one, so let's select the layer. Go to Appearance and then choose our fill color. There's a white line in the middle here, so let's add a line and resize it. We need to add a text, so let's choose our Type tool and change the color to white. Now we can proceed with our text and also select our preferred font. Let's also duplicate this, change the text, color, and resize it. We need to add a green circle, so let's choose our color here and then select the Ellipse tool. Now we can draw our circle by holding the Shift key. This looks good, but we're missing the arrow sign. For that, we'll go to Flaticon and search for our icon. The best part about these icons is that we can change the color right here. So let's change this one to white, download, and import it into our project. 
We'll resize and position it inside our circle. Finally, we can add a drop shadow to the arrow to make it better stand out. We need to duplicate these layers, but first, let's add an eye icon to our views text. We'll grab one from Flaticon and position it. Now we can go ahead and duplicate our text layers, move them to the right side, and modify them appropriately. We'll grab a clock from Flaticon as well and position it here. Finally, we'll bring in our green circle and arrow sign. The last step here is to add a line here, so we'll draw one and change the blending mode to soft light. Feel free to test these out and pick your preference. But once you're happy with it, you can duplicate the layer and move it upwards. The line looks too prominent here, so we can reduce the opacity and also do the same for the other one. This doesn't look bad, so we can go ahead and export our image as a JPEG. Next is this style of thumbnail, inspired by Bible in a nutshell. The first step to creating this thumbnail is to create the respective images. We'll go to ChatGPT and give it a command to generate a prompt for us. Key points to highlight in this prompt is the characteristics of the character. We also want a Pixar animation style image, a close-up shot, and a side view of the character. The character's background isn't needed, so let's use a white one. Feel free to generate your images here if you have a GPT Plus subscription, but free users can use a tool like Ideogram or Leonardo AI. We'll use this same process to generate prompts for all other images in this thumbnail. These images look great, so we can go ahead and remove the white background from our characters. We'll drop our image inside Adobe Background Remover and wait for it to do its magic. Our image without the background is ready, so let's create a new project inside Photoshop. The first thing we'll do here is to import our background. Now we can bring in our first character and change the orientation so that he faces this direction. Let's also expand and rotate it slightly. Now we'll bring in our second image and expand it slightly. There's a bit of an issue here with the staff, so let's rasterize the layer, choose the magic tool, and then select this area. Now we can go ahead and hit delete on the keyboard. We want to add a bit of glow to our characters, so let's right-click the layer and choose blending options. Now we can add an outer glow and choose our preferred color. Let's repeat the same thing with our other character as well, and finally bring in our avatar. We'll scale it up slightly and position it, making sure the laptop is hidden. The background should be slightly blurry, so let's select the layer, go to Filter, Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. We don't want it to be too blurry, so this looks alright. Let's brighten our avatar a bit by adding a curve and also make sure the curve only affects the avatar by creating a clipping mask. Finally, we'll add a drop shadow and change the color to white. Feel free to make any changes here, but we can go ahead and export our image as a JPEG. I'm sure you've seen this thumbnail style all over YouTube, so let's try recreating them. First thing we need is a background image. We'll head over to Ideogram AI and create something simple. Now, we can create our new document and import the image. Next, let's bring in our avatar and any other images. For this demonstration, we'll be using the images we generated for the previous thumbnail. Let's scale down our images, move them to the left side of our avatar, and also add a bit of rotation. Now we need to add a bit of glow to the images, so let's right-click the layer, select blending options, and either add an outer glow or a stroke. Feel free to choose based on the look you're going for, but for this demonstration, we'll be using an outer glow with this color. We also need to repeat this with our second layer and also scale down our images a bit more. Now let's grab the rectangle tool, make sure fill is empty, and then add a stroke. Next, we can draw our rectangle and use the Properties panel to decrease the size of our stroke like this and add some rounded corners. I'll be locking the background and avatar to avoid moving them when making a selection. Our rectangle needs to be positioned here and tilted slightly. Keep in mind that this is all based on your personal preference, so feel free to make any changes you desire. Now, we can go ahead and add our text using the Type tool and also scale and reposition it appropriately. We need to add views. So let's duplicate our text layer by using the shortcut Ctrl-J for Windows or Command-J for Mac and also position it. We also need to add this green circle. So let's select the Ellipse tool, make sure the stroke is off, and then select the fill color we want. Now, we'll draw our circle while holding down the Shift key. For the arrow, we'll head over to Flaticon, grab one and drop it inside our project. We could have changed the color of the arrow directly inside Flaticon, but we're going to try doing that inside Photoshop. We simply need to go to Blending Options, select Color Overlay, and finally change the color to white. Simple as that. Now let's rotate it and position it inside our green circle. I'm also going to add a dark rectangle on top of our background image and then reduce the opacity slightly. The next step is to add the arrow at the top, so let's import one, change the color to white, and reposition it where we want it. We want it behind our avatar, so let's move the layer behind these images. This looks good, but we want to add a bit of glow, so let's go to Blending Options and add an outer glow. Feel free to choose your preferred color to go with the theme of your thumbnail. This looks good, so let's add our text here. 
resize it appropriately, and go to Blending Options. Our background seems a bit distracting behind our text, so let's add a drop shadow. Choose black and play around with the size. This looks better, but we're going to add a slight outer glow to our text. Feel free to make it brighter depending on your personal preference. In case you want to curve the text, you simply need to double-click it. Choose this icon and then select Arc. Now you can use this slider to choose how much you want your text to bend. Our image looks good, but we can brighten up our avatar a bit by adding a curve. This looks good, so we can create a clipping mask. We can go ahead and export this, but I'm going to bring in a YouTube icon, resize it, and then play around a bit with the blending options. This looks alright, so we can go ahead and export it as a JPEG. The last thumbnail we're going to create is this money style. So let's create our new document and import our preferred background. Feel free to use whichever background you like, but we'll be using the same background from our last thumbnail. To make everything easier to follow, I'm going to hide our new background. Now we can go ahead and import our avatar. Next, we'll import our pile of money, resize it, and add a hue saturation from the adjustment tab. We want our money to be green, so we'll select that here, increase the saturation, and finally decrease the lightness. Let's make sure our hue saturation only affects the money by creating a clipping mask. You can choose it from the right-click menu or click between these two layers, while holding the Option key on a Mac or Alt key on Windows. We need to duplicate this, so let's create a group by clicking this and then double-click to rename it. To create the duplicate, we simply need to hold the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows, then drag the folder above or below to create a copy. Let's try this a few more times and also lock the first three in place. Now we can move this one behind our avatar, rotate and scale it slightly, make another copy, move it to the other side and rotate it as well. Now, let's turn on our background image and check out the results so far. This looks good, but let's blur our background slightly by going to Filter, Blur, and finally Gaussian Blur. We can choose how blurry we want the image to be, but this looks alright. Now, let's lock the background in place to avoid moving it. We need to add some shadows to make our character look like he's really inside this pile. So let's go down here and add a hue saturation. We need to apply it only to our image, so let's create a clipping mask, go to Properties, and decrease the lightness. Now make sure this mask is selected, and then hit the command plus I on the keyboard for Mac or Control, plus I on Windows to invert it. Now take the brush tool, select Soft Round from here, and make sure the opacity is set to 100%, and Flow is set to something like this. Then set the color to white, and start painting here. This creates some kind of shadow effect. We'll repeat this process for the pile of money behind our avatar. As you can see, this looks considerably better. We can also brighten our avatar a bit by adding a curve. Let's also add a bit of outer glow by right-clicking our avatar. Then, we'll select Blending Options and finally Outer Glow. Feel free to choose your preferred color. Play around with the size, opacity, and spread. This looks alright, so go ahead and click OK. Now, we need to add our text, so let's select the Type tool and draw our text box. Let's type in our text, scale it slightly, and move it behind our avatar. Feel free to choose your preferred text color from here, but we'll keep the white color for this demonstration. We can also add a bit of outer glow and drop shadow to our text. In case you decide to change your colors, simply select the mask and then choose your preferred colors. You'll need to repeat this for every one of these. This looks alright, so let's add our dollar text and scale it. We'll also import our YouTube logo, scale it, add an outer glow and drop shadow. Let's also change the color for our text and play around with these blending options. Feel free to use your preferred settings here. The last step here is to add the curved dashed lines between the logo and dollar sign. For that, we'll create this shape with the ellipse tool. Now we'll remove the fill and add a stroke with our preferred color. Let's also choose 4 for the stroke size and change it into dashed lines. We also need to round the edges so we'll select these. Feel free to use the settings here to fine tune the gaps and the length. Next, we can choose the lasso tool, draw a shape around the parts we want to keep, and finally hit this mask icon. Let's move this behind our character and change the color. We can use the gradient and angle to make the beginning of our line slightly red and the ending white. Finally, let's change the dollar sign to white and then export our thumbnail. This looks great, but you can grab inspiration for other thumbnails, editing, and even script writing from these awesome channels.